In this tutorial, I'll be demonstrating how you can trace a PNG logo to vectors using the Affinity app. Now there are several ways that you can go about this. The quickest and easiest way would be to use the vector image tracing tool, which produces a pretty good result based on the resolution of the image that you're tracing, or you can manually trace it, which takes a little more work, but it does produce a more accurate result. I'm gonna show you each in this tutorial, starting with the vector image tracing. So getting started, I have this example logo. This is the Affinity logo, and if I zoom in on this, you can see that this is indeed a pixelized PNG image. So let's go over how to trace this. First, I'm gonna come over here to the vector environment, and then I'm gonna enable vector view by clicking on this button over here. And with the image selected, I'm gonna come up here to the vector menu, and I'll go to image trace, and we're gonna get the image trace menu. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna enable this setting right here that says split view. This is gonna show us the difference between the pixelized image versus the image that we're tracing. And you can see the before and after here. So if you notice, the pixelized image has straight lines and sharp corners, whereas the vector image, the corners get a little rounded. So I would recommend playing with these sliders a bit just to figure out the correct tolerance and threshold for this. For example, if you bring the curve fitting tolerance all the way down, you end up with rounded corners like that. If you bring it all the way up, the corners become sharper, but the angles become a little messed up. So you have to find a happy balance in there. So I'm gonna go with I'm actually gonna bring this all the way down and go with the rounded corners. And if you come up here, you can see this is supposed to be a straight line right here. If I bring the pixelated view in, you can see the difference. Let me zoom out a bit. This looks like a straight line with sharp corners, but with the vector tracing, it's not quite accurate. So this is the trade-off you're making when using the image trace tool. It's quick and easy, but you're not getting a 100% accurate result. If you're happy with the result though, just click the apply button. And now you have a vectorized image of your logo. Now let's go over how you can manually trace a copy of this PNG logo so that you can get a more accurate tracing. First, I'm gonna come up here to the view menu and I'm gonna to go to snapping. Make sure you turn off force pixel alignment and then close out of the menu and select the image. And I would recommend bringing the opacity down roughly in half because we're gonna use the pen tool to trace over this design and when the image has a reduced opacity, it makes it easier to see what we're tracing. So I'm gonna grab the pen tool, which is located over here. You can also access it by pressing the letter P on your keyboard. And I'm gonna come up here to the settings menu, and I'm going to enable rubber band mode. That's gonna allow us to see the line that we're drawing as we draw it, which makes life a little easier. Now I'm gonna click right here to add a new point, and you can see it's, when I move my cursor, the line is following. This is the path that's going to be placed. I'm gonna hold the shift key so that I get a straight line going perfectly up and tracing the edge of this letter A, and I'm gonna to click to add a point. And then I'll come over here, and I'll click to add another point. Now don't worry about the line following the curvature. We're gonna edit that after we're done drawing the path. I'm basically just drawing a very rough outline of this shape. So I'm gonna create another point over here, and then another point over here, and then another over here, and then another here. And when I get to a corner point, I'm gonna click to add the point, and if I need the line to go straight across, again, I'm gonna hold the shift key, and that'll lock it onto the horizontal axis, and then I'll click to add another point, and then I'll hold the shift key to bring this line straight down, and I'll click to add another point, and again, still holding shift, add another point, and then we can come up here and continue the drawing. And that's a good way to ensure that your lines are following perfect horizontal and vertical angles. So I'm gonna add some more points. And then once I'm finished, I'll connect the original line. I'll connect back to the original starting point. And now we have a rough outline of the shape traced. So what we have to do now is come over here to the nodes tool. You can also access it by pressing the letter A on your keyboard. And you could take these lines now and just click and drag them to make them fit the curvature of the shape. Now I'm gonna do the same thing with all of these segments. I'm gonna click and drag and make these lines match the curvature of the shape. And don't worry about them being 100% accurate just yet. We're going to go back and make another edit once we get the baseline curvatures set in place. Okay, so I've edited the curves of all of these nodes, but the problem we have now is that it's still not 100% accurate. If you come down here, for example, 
we have this little bit of a sharp corner and the curvature isn't quite correct. What we could do now is click on the node to select it and now you'll have these handles where you can fine tune the curvature just a little more. And to have a perfectly to have a perfectly rounded node right here so that there's no corner, you'll wanna make sure that these two handles are running parallel to each other. And to ensure that, you can take one of these handles and just move it in place, and then you'll see the node turn into a pink circle. And when you see that, you can release the click, and now it'll be a perfectly rounded node, and you won't have to worry about that becoming a corner, and you can continue on editing the curvature of these pads. So I'm gonna do the same thing with the rest of these. Okay, and I think that's looking pretty good, or close enough anyway. So I'm gonna zoom out, and I'm gonna take this logo and move it out of the way. I'm gonna hold shift to lock it onto the horizontal axis, and I'm gonna bring the opacity all the way up, and I'm gonna select our curve right here, and I wanna make this the same color that this is. So I'm just gonna grab my dropper tool up here in the color menu and click and drag over this portion to apply that color. And I'm going to remove the stroke because I don't want that outline to be there. And now I can take this image and move it back in place. I'm gonna hold the shift key while I move this over to lock it onto the horizontal axis and move that in place. And now I just have to trace this rectangle, which isn't too difficult. There's a dedicated tool for that. So let me click on this to select it. I'm going to enable snapping so that I can snap directly to this rectangle to create it in the exact size. And then I'm gonna grab the rectangle tool and I'm just gonna bring the cursor up here to the top left until it snaps to the top left corner and then click and drag down like this until it snaps to the bottom right corner. And now what I can do is I can select the corner and choose rounded and then I could take this drop down right here and click and drag it until the curvature of the corners matches that of the logo that I'm tracing. And that looks pretty close right there. I'm just gonna adjust it a little more. Okay, that looks close enough. I'm gonna leave that as it is. And now I could take this logo, let me raise this to the top so I can select it. And I'm gonna move this out of the way and I'm gonna take this rectangle and I'll use my dropper to apply that fill color. And then I can lower this beneath the shape that we trace. And there we go. We have traced a vector logo manually. And you can see here, we get a much better result. It took some more work, but we got a better outcome here. We have nice sharp corners as it's supposed to be. If you found this lesson useful, be sure to check out my Affinity Masterclass. It's a collection of over 80 videos where we go over all of the tools and features in the Affinity app, and I explain what they are and demonstrate how they work. Kind of like how I did in this video. We even have a private community where you can ask questions, get help from me anytime you need it, and share your work to get feedback from the community. By the end of this course, you will have everything you need to become a master of the Affinity app. I'll have some information about that down below if you want to check that out. And as always, thanks for watching.